you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Here's your host, Chris Voss. I don't think that's going to get me sued for the uh, uh, for that one uh, wrestling bit. Welcome to the show, my friends. Welcome to the show. We certainly appreciate you coming by and spending some time with us today. We have an amazing show for you today. This the this show is so amazing. It's more amazing than any other show that's come before, and uh, you're going to love it. You're going to love it, and you're going to like it, or else. Don't make me come over there. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not that way. You know that. We love you on the Chris Voss Show. But, uh, you know, I am. Uh, we love you. When the family loves you but doesn't judge you. But remember, uh, just like your mom, I might come over there with a stick. No, it's not, it's not the 70s. Stop that, Chris. Anyway, guys, as always, we're further to your family, friends, and relatives. We have an amazing uh, discussion we're going to have on the show. It's a multifaceted show. There is more than one facet of the show we have an amazing author on the show talk about a couple books and we're also going to be talking about uh, an amazing value community uh where you can uh, produce different uh, content uh teach people school people course people but then also have a community that's built around it so we'll get into some of that so stay tuned as we wander through the production of the show and uh, get to know our guests better as always youtube.com for just chris foss goodreads.com for just chris foss linkedin all those crazy places on the interwebs, except for Snapchat. We will not send you DMs for the most obvious of reasons, because that's bad. Or at least we think so. And sorry, you know, the Chris Voss show just doesn't ever, it's always closed at all times. I don't know, there's a joke there somewhere, but you figure it out. Anyway, guys, welcome to the show. Uh, we have an amazing author on the show. Uh, Dana Sardano is on the show with us today. She's the author of a book called 10 Recommandments for Personal Empowerment. And a new book, Woo Woo, she will be talking about that will be coming about. And she's also uh, the head of a new company called finduniquelyyou.com. So we'll get into that later in the show. Uh, she is an amazing person. Uh, at least that's what she told me in the green room. And I believe her. I believe her after talking to her for about 15 minutes. Anyway, <laughs> she is a former high school teacher administrator who in 2017 left a 25 career, 25 year career in fact in education to become an artist after picking up the paintbrush for the first time in 2015 she has since opened ubuntu ubuntu fish gallery in stewart florida authored several books co-founded phenom publishing and find uniquely you.com her most recent written works 10 recommandments for personal empowerment is a loose autobiography written in a how-to format that is structured around the life lessons that have led her to her own personal empowerment her follow-up to 10 recommandments beyond the 10 uh, decoding the woo chronicles dana's spiritual journey and leads us to the right here, right now. That sounds like a Van Halen song. That's one of my favorite songs, actually, from Van Halen. Right now. Do it now. Uh, so, welcome to the show, Dana. How are you? Oh, I'm good. And thanks for the introduction. That was nice. Yeah, we always do a ramble that kind of wanders around, and we do in a, we just kind of fake it as we make it every time. And people are like, I, <laughs> I had one New York Times reporter says, yeah, I just like to go through your shows and listen to whatever ramble you make up every time just to see how, how off the cuff it comes and <laughs> whether it flies or not. So welcome to the show. Give us your dot coms one more time so people can find you on the interwebs. Um, I independently could be found at um, UbuntuFishGallery.com. Uh, my collaborative works my with my uh, business partner, Angela DeMarco, shout out, woo -woo, uh, can be found on finduniquelyyou.com. Together, um, we've created, uh, she, it's her brain baby. I'm just going to put it out there. But together, we've created finduniquelyyou.com. And the most recent arm is uh, Phenom Publishing. That there can be go. found on finduniquelyyou.com. So we're publishing books, we're doing workshops, we're making art, we're having a party. 
There you go. Wait, yeah, there's a party yeah. too. I want to get invited to that. You are. Here we are. Cool. All right. Is that in the mail? Uh, no. You got a, you got you got more than one arm going on. You're like one of those Indian ladies who sits there in the Hindu <laughs> thing, and she's got like 50 arms. Uh, so those of you not watching, because uh, the podcast goes on audio, you should check out the uh, YouTube version, and you can see the beautiful art behind uh, Dana. Uh, you've got a few different works there from uh, from your hand. Yeah. Yeah, and this is my office. So mm -hmm. my office in the gallery, there's a there's a door right there, and it takes you out to the front where the gallery is. So the place is it's, it's all mine. It's all my go. yeah, picked up a paintbrush one day, lost my mind, and here we are. Well, I mean, being a teacher for 25 years will do that to you. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> well, high schoolers make you lose your mind. Yeah. Uh, my mom was a teacher for 20 years. And I think she lost, well, she lost her mind raising us as kids. So I think that's why it made her schooling easier. I should tell her that joke and see how hard she slaps me. So uh, welcome to the show. Let's, uh, let's, uh, we'll set a pathway here and we'll wander down this road. Uh, we'll start with your books 10 Commandments for Personal Empowerment. Why did you decide to just override what God wrote and, uh, and redo 10 recommitments. What's going on there? <laughs> because I'm totally irreverent now. Oh. Why did I overwrite what God wrote? Oh, that's such an awesome way of putting that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I, in, in the gallery, it's not just an art gallery, it's intuitive lounge. Because what I've learned is intuition and creativity, they grow in tandem. Right. Mm -hmm. When you become creative, you your senses, you know, open up. And when you allow your senses to open up, your creativity becomes, you know, it flourishes. Mm -hmm. So the gallery is about intuition and, and creativity. What I do in the gallery, other than create art, is I do intuitive guidance and stuff like that. I do uh -huh. workshops and all of these things to help people become more empowered and live their best lives. Mm -hmm. So in the spring of 2021, my entire family gets COVID. Four of us drop like flies. Boom, wow. boom, boom. And so, yeah, I was like the last one to go, like like the rhino with the tranquilizer dart, like, no, but we all went down for the count. And after the initial, the initial, oh my God, I have COVID, right? I was uh -huh. laying in bed in stillness, which I usually don't allow myself to be still because we're living our lives. Huh. And um, I started getting these profound ideas fall into my head like stuff that I always do in my guidance and my <laughs> workshops and stuff but like with more clarity more simplicity like the cool anecdotes that you always use or the analogies and I started jotting them into my phone um, because I knew that they were good and when I felt better I'm like let me put them on the computer so I typed them in the computer and I realized I had 10 of them and uh -huh. I was like, oh, I'll probably do like a lecture series or something. And then I was like, let me write a little, let me organize them. And next thing I know, I'm like, holy crap, I'm writing a book. There so so my feeling was <laughs> no one's commanding anybody to do anything. But you will do it or else. Yeah, yeah, do it. But if you follow these 10 pearls of wisdom, these recommandments, because uh -huh. again, no one's forcing you, then uh -huh. here we are. So that and my irreverence all together is what created that title. There you go. I like it. Ten recommandments. I think that uh, original set was due for a rewrite anyway. You know, I don't like the uh, <laughs> thou shalt not cover the the, the next door neighbor's wife because my next door neighbor's wife is quite hot. No, I'm just kidding, people. As <laughs> we're just doing comedy here. So uh, tell us about the ten recommandments for personal empowerment. Uh, my understanding is it's loose autobiography a little bit there. Yeah. So so what I did was. I took these like pearls of wisdom that I gleaned through my experiences in my life. Like I came from a bit of a dumpster fire and I've managed over the, Oh dude, we don't have time. Like we really don't have time. Well, the book but, is for. Exactly. Right. So I came from this dumpster fire and over the years, the lessons that I've learned and the insights that I gleaned, I, I, I utilize in my life and I turned it around and I lived this wonderful life. But each one of them, I, I remember the story. I remember when I learned the lesson and when that insight was birthed. So it begins with a, a prologue, like loose, like this is who I am. This is where I come from. But as I talk about each chapter, each chapter is obviously a recommandment. I utilize these anecdotes, these personal stories that don't always paint me in the most, you know, in the best light. And, you know, actually, when I released the book, I was like, oh, crap, knowing that it was going to be out there. And so it's a loose autobiography because I tell all these personal stories, but it's how to, because I also the teacher in me says, listen, I'm not telling you what to do, but I did this, this, and this. And if you try this, it may work for you as well. There you go. 
There you go. So a uh, good recommitments. There's 10 different ones. Uh, you want to give us a sampling of some of the 10? Just give us a hit out of a couple to tease out. Mm. So the first one is I shall not claim victimhood. Ah, And like then it one. continues with, you know, I sh- rather I shall. And then it goes into the chapter. But recommitments two and three are back to back. Two talks about how we... Um, have an emotional guidance system Mm -hmm. and so our emotions instead of become it really it's i shall not become entrenched in my emotions Ah. rather i shall use them as a guidance system and then the third one talks about the toxic behavioral patterns beliefs and behavioral patterns that we adopt when we become entrenched in our emotions so it builds like that i am not a victim my emotions are here to guide me not to you know wallow in them and this is what happens when we do and then it goes from there and the last recommandment because i'll let you read the book to get the innards but the last recommandment is um i i shall not live in fear Mm. and then it goes into you know what that looks like you know, I like this. Uh, you know, people can get lost in their emotions, and we see that with the Karens you're running around. <laughs> you see that on TikTok videos. Um, you know, <laughs> screaming at people. You're like, you're a little too much in your emotions there, uh, lady. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, everyone has those moments in life where they can get a little too much in their emotions. And uh, I like the victimhood thing. Somehow over the last 20, 30 years, uh, we've become a society that it, there's a lot of victimhood competition. You know, and it, it's like, you know, somebody's like, I was, you know, I had some trauma and I was victimized. And somebody's like, no, I had more trauma than you. And here's my story. And then they're like, no, I had, you know, it, it's like, it's become like a thing, like a badge, like, yeah. you know, like no one can, I mean, yeah, and I'm not being dismissive of trauma. Everyone, uh, I don't know about everyone, but I don't want to throw everyone in the boat, but a, a lot of people have childhood trauma and a lot of that childhood trauma sometimes uh, has, has a deep effect on the rest of our lives. If you don't get some help, see a psychiatrist, people, please. Um, you know, everyone always asks me, they're like, what would you tell your 16-year-old self? I go see a psychiatrist. Um, <clears throat> the uh, Don't wait until you're 50 and you look back and you're like, wow, that's a trail of destruction. Maybe I should get some help. Uh, yeah. But uh, but no, I, I like the non-victimhood thing because when you live in a when you live in the I don't know what's the right word the embodiment of victimhood and you're you're in that pool you can't succeed because you're always wearing that victimhood uh, shell or that mask or that cloak whatever um, and the the only way to get out of it is to be empowered and the only way to be empowered is to be self um, you know be self aware and and and, and self uh, what's the word I'm looking for. You know, basically, be be take care. Self-aware. Realize that you're self-aware, and there's another word, self-actualization, or yep. Basically, you need to you know that you have the power to take care of yourself. You know what happened to you in the past is a thing, and you need to find out you know, how to fix that. But you know, there there comes a time in your life where you got to go like, I'm responsible for what goes on from here on out and how I deal with it. And uh, self accountability that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. 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 And you could read the first three chapters, the first three recommandments mm-hmm. and just read those three and it will change your life because it's exactly what you just said. You know, we are not victims. It's all just information. It's all just information. Mm-hmm. It's sucky information. There's shitty experiences. It's unfortunate, but it's the impact on us. that really makes the difference. So I, when I talk about personal trauma, you know, there are people that have been seriously traumatized. And then there are people that have an experience, if we're comparing, that isn't even remotely close. But if the impact on that child, you know, the seven-year-old version of me is traumatized. Maybe my mother forgot to pick me up from camp. I and got a hangnail once. It, but that's my point. Like, I don't, like, I, you know, you're, you're joking, but that's the point. If the yeah. impact on the child leaves the child with the belief of, I got a hangnail once and the adults in my life weren't there to put me at ease. Yeah. Then that child grows up with the belief about themselves that the people that love and care for me will never take care of me. And then they go through their life creating patterns. And then at 50, like you said, they're like, they look back and they're like, oh, whoopsie. Yeah. Sorry about all the collateral damage. 
It's true. I hate to minimize it with a joke, but a joke is uh, worn in here. Uh, yeah, I, it turns out I attract and seek other uh, uh, relationship people that also have hangnails. So uh, <laughs> uh, put that in your Tinder box, uh, your Tinder profile box. Anyway, um, so you've written this book. And this book's out. Uh, it came out April twenty third, twenty twenty two. You're re-releasing it with some updates. Tell us about the updates and where people can get the updated versions. Okay, so it was released, like you said, in April. Um, I with a with a publisher, and over the last six months or so, um, I've decided to pull it from that publisher, create my own publishing company with my partner Angela DeMarco, and re-release it. So if you were to go right now in this moment on Amazon, you would see it under the previous publisher. And that's great. Feel free to purchase the book. No one's going to stop you here, right? But within days, because it's already been submitted, mm -hmm. um, you can find it under Phenom Publishing because, you know, we're Phenoms. But under Phenom Publishing, um, on Amazon, you could find it on um, the Uniquely You. If you go to the Uniquely You website, you could find it in audiobook where I have uh, self-narrated it. Mm -hmm. And um, and then soon it will be because we've just re-released it in other places like Barnes & Noble and so on and so forth. But right now, because Amazon's the easiest way to go. I could order something now. We could finish this interview and it could be at my back step. There you go. Uh, th this interview is going to be out in 72 hours because we've got a few other shows in the can. So by then, hopefully it'll be. Oh, out. Phenom's yeah. rocking it in 72 yeah. hours for sure. For yeah. sure. There you go. So we got time. Uh, so, uh, and then, and then usually once we put it up, it takes a while to flow out to all the different uh, syndicators, you know, iTunes, Pandora, iHeartRadio, and all that stuff. So that'll be great. Uh, let's talk about the other book that you're releasing. How soon is that one being released? And what's the title again? Uh, it's called Beyond the Ten because the first one is Ten Recommendments and ah, it's Beyond so the it's Ten. So it's another ten? No, 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 no. It's Beyond the Ten. It's the eleven. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a big eleven. It's really big. It's a whole book. <laughs> but it's beyond. It's Beyond the Ten. It's called Decoding the Woo Woo. Like that's like the the real title. And for those of you who are not familiar with the term woo woo. This idea of the metaphysical community or the spiritual community, those that think and see and feel beyond the earthly realm, you know, like the, the, the full moon rituals and your crystals and, you know, that sort of stuff. What I learned in my experience is when I was working out my, we'll call them imbalances, but when I took the dumpster fire and turned it into, you know, a silk purse, I don't know, I just combined two different things, but... Um, I learned that when I became more empowered in all aspects of my life, that magical aspect that we look and we think is outside of us, you know, like again, the psyche, excuse me, the psychics and the Reiki healers and all of the stuff that we think of as magical, the witches, if you will, mm -hmm. started, I started to see that kind of magic in my life. My awareness opened up, my creativity was heightened. I began to feel more connected to the world around me, more Ubuntu, if you will. <laughs> and so I, I embarked on this unintentional spiritual journey. Like, honest mm -hmm. to God, my I, I quit my job. I was going to become an artist. And it turned into the spiritual journey in the life that I live now. So I wrote the book to say, it doesn't look the way we think it looks. Mm -hmm. When you experience it, it looks a lot differently. And so it's kind of like a guide for those that don't know what the hell they're doing out there. There's a lot of people doing that right now. In fact, there's a lot of Twitter employees right now uh, that got laid off uh, <laughs> are looking for their spiritual journey. Um, but no, a lot of people are, you know, they're, this is kind of a time where there actually are a lot of layoffs going on right now. Yeah. Uh, and and that's usually a time where people go and try and find themselves. Um, in fact, the last yeah. two years, we've been going through the great resignation where people are trying to uh you know have been resigning and going hey man I, i'm tired of working for the man i'm tired of working 40 hour weeks and you know the the, the company is like you will work hard and you know elon yeah. musk types who are like we need 80 hours a week out of you or else and they're like no man i want to do something where you know maybe i can work at home or be with the family more or uh you know one of my friends recently uh he moved from a company that was five days a week to four days a week and uh and he likes that and he feels more complete with that and good for him you know yeah. um i mean everybody knows 
everybody on Friday just sits around and watches YouTube and TikTok videos anyway, right? And the clock. So, yeah, <laughs> and place pong, you know, it is a, you know, and they they have that they have that screen that comes up that makes it look like they're. I saw I saw a TikTok video somebody posted the other day, and they basically have a screensaver that will come up that looks like Windows is putting in an update and restarting, and so you're just sitting there just going, "Oh, boss, sorry, I'm just waiting for Windows to do the the update thing," and it's like a but you can hit a button and it comes up, you know. And so you're just like, yeah, I, I'm not working right now when you came by because, you know, I'll get your TC, your TPI reports or whatever. <laughs> from space. So uh, anything more you want to touch on before Woo, before you talk about your other launch or your startup? I do because I just want to respond to what you just said. Think about what you do for a living, right? You're sitting here. you got your Chris Voss hat. you got your Chris Voss background. you got your Chris Voss mug and your Chris Voss microphone. And you're doing something that you love to do every day. You can see it every time. I'm supposed to love this. <laughs> but I can see the sparkle in your look at you. You're all teeth, right? So you're enjoying, you're enjoying your life. And there's so many people out there. Even though teaching was a calling and I was doing something I love, I was still on Fridays going, you know, checking my checking the time and my screensaver and you know, whatever it is, right? Not screensaver, the wallpaper, the update, whatever it was you said. Well, you're a teacher. You just like you get the summers off and you're like, oh God, I gotta go back to that thing. We do the countdown. It takes us weeks to decompress. Well, it takes us weeks to decompress, and then there's the last two weeks before you go back, and you're like, "Oh my god!" Thirteen. That's when you do the major drinking, right? When teachers do the major drinking. Oh my god! But imagine a world. Imagine a world where we imagine a world where where people love what they do. That's weird. People love what they do. They told me when I quit my six figure job to paint. They're like, "You can never do that," and I'm like, "Yeah, hold my beer. Watch. Hold my beer." Watch yeah. me go. Yeah. And that's what Find Uniquely You is about. Find Uniquely You is about gathering people who have a passion for something and giving them an opportunity to share it on this platform and then bring people who want to see what's on the other side of that curtain. Maybe they could take workshops, become a part of the community, and then eventually, you know, do the creative or pursue the creative outlets that they enjoy as well. But you wanted to talk about woo-woo. I'm not going to go off on that. Find uniquelyyou.com, but I'm not going to talk about that. There you go. All right, so we've got woo in the can. We've got your prior book. And then this is, just to remind people, this is coming out in how many weeks? So woo-woo is any day now because woo-woo, the, the – Again, we're publishing it through Phenom. So we're in the final, final stages of crossing every T, dotting every I, making sure it's perfection. And the cover, just if you wind up looking for it, the I'm like backwards here. This painting, right? This, Jesus, this painting right here, if you're watching, is on the cover of Decoding the Woo Woo. And that will be definitely before Christmas, but maybe even in the next week or so. There you so go. November, December, 2022 to make there it. There you go. And let's get this in really quick. You do spiritual readings and private group events too at your, at your gift shop and art gallery there yeah. in Florida. Mm -hmm. There you go. I love your shop too. It's got like a really cute fish on the front. It's very Floridi Floridian. It's yeah. very, it looks more kind of like Key West, Key Westy sort of. Oh, know. the building is beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. a beautiful little cottage. It's a cottage. Is that appropriate? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. like a, yeah. it's a cottage. Yeah, it's a, it's just, it, that looks like something I, was, I see when I'm walking down the boardwalk in Key West or something. Yeah, I well, it's a Key West style. It's the actual style of the house. Oh. So you're spot on. See, I knew that. Now I'm hungry for pie, Key West, Key, oh, key Lime Pie. Key Lime Pie. There's some place that you can order, like, the Key Lime Pies that are, like, real ones out of Key West. There's a, some I think it's there. called the Key Lime Pie Company. Like, yeah, I, think I think it, it is. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I mean to order one of those one of these days. Now I'm hungry. All right, let's move on the show before I eat my hand. Uh, the, let's talk about Uniquely You, the, okay. find uniquelyyou.com. This is yeah. a company that you've set up that people can uh, join, community, work with, uh, build out things. You know, th this there, we're kind of in this phase now where a lot of people are making money, making courses, and teaching other people. Um, I teach people on the podcast how not to podcast. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, talk to me about this company. Why did you build it? What does it do? Give us an overview, if you would, please. Okay, so so Angela DeMarco, who is who is the founder of Find Uniquely, I'm I'm her co-founder. I'm just her her trusty sidekick. But this this brain baby of hers, she had this idea that what if people 
no longer had to feel lonely? What if they had a community where they could interact with other like-minded people in a positive and an uplifting way and really um, develop their creativity? And if they have a passion for something, they could present it or teach it to others on a platform. I thought that's what cats were for. If you're lonely, no, I'm just kidding. A, cats are for lonely, and then crazy. all yeah, the other cats. social media is for connecting. <laughs> but this is positive and uplifting. This is there a, you so, go. yeah. So, um, she had this idea, and it's quickly developed over the last two years, where we are now up and running. We're very, very, very new, but we're up and running with our workshops. And our workshops were all developed by people who had either a book that they wanted to teach about, like that's what I do, or a passion, like there's a, a workshop um, that somebody does. Miss Marie, Miss Marie teaches how to teach him how to do American Sign Language, but she does it through music. So she does Bob, uh -huh. one class is Bob Marley's One Love, and she teaches you through the sign language. It's awesome. So we have these mm -hmm. different workshops, and we have seven different schools of thought. So you have the school of metaphysics, the school of creative expression. It takes a village, which is obviously for the children. School of empowerment, that's where I reside. The pharmacy school, which begins with an F because it's about plant-based things and you know holistic nutrition and stuff like that and when the people come in and they submit to be you instructor then they go through the ready set teach program with me and Kristen and we help develop them so it meets our standards because we're not just letting people throw things on our platform mm -hmm. and we create these courses these live interactive courses these intimate workshops of 20 people or less so the community could be developed it's not just about the subject matter oh. It's about connecting with people and, and, and enjoying the community. And just to give you just a specific example, I taught a class. My last class was a four-week course on 10 recommendments for personal empowerment. And mm -hmm. I had a group of women. I had about five women in there. And they all fell in love with each other. And we all had this great rapport. And they all learned something. So then they took my next class called Veda Finds Her Crown, which is on another book that I've written that we we're probably not going to bother talking about. And they took that four week course. And now there were some new additions, maybe one dropped off. And now their relationship is really strong. And we just finished that workshop and they're like, well, we want to take another because they've created this friendship as well, as well as learning something and as well as doing things to, to, for the betterment of their lives. So that's just that one piece but mm -hmm. uniquely it was also, we have a library in development. Remember, we're very new. We mm -hmm. have a library in development. We have a lighthouse in development. The library is going to be like, sort of like YouTube where people could, you know, put their, their stuff and you know, get royalties. Uh, again, events, the, the publishing company, if I, if we have a new instructor that has this great thing and has a book that they want to write, we'll publish it for you. There you go. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of components, but right now the workshops are, are bread and butter. I mean, for lack of a better way of putting it. That's awesome. There's a few things here. Uh, now it's got 25 seat capacity. Yeah. So 25 yeah. people can go on it. Uh, you've got the school of thrivelihood. Oh yeah. I forgot that one. The school yeah. of empowerment, school of metaphysics. It takes a village school. Is that for raising kids in the neighborhood that are bratty? Um, oh yeah. Uh, OPK, other people's kids. Other people's OPK. <laughs> I didn't even know it was a thing. Other people's kids. Oh, it's not. That's my husband. Oh. And I, when we're out, we're like, ooh, OPK. Oh, OPK. OPK. <laughs> yeah. I those must be the kids I yell at from the lawn. Get off my lawn. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Clint yeah. Eastwood, uh, sort of crutchety old manner voice. Uh, school of Creative Expression, the pharmacy school, and that's with an F as in farm, I believe. Yes. Okay, and kitchen sink school. So I imagine that's everything, including the kitchen sink. Yeah, it's everything that doesn't fit in one of the other categories. Now, does everything have to fit in one of these categories? Are there any new categories that can be made, or, or how does that work? Well, everything really does fit in all those categories, because like I said, whatever doesn't fit in thrivelihood to creative expression to it takes a village, you know, it, and, the, and the others will fit in kitchen sink. Because it's there really everything else. Everything in the kitchen sink. Yeah. So people can do these live shows. Do they stay up later where people can watch them if they miss the live? So that's a good question, actually. It's international. Mm -hmm. So our times, you know, we have people in Mumbai. We have people in England, Australia, Canada, Greece, Rome. Uh, obviously, you know, all over the United States. Our new instructors are all over. And so we try to time them in a way that work for, for everybody. But if it doesn't. If you took a course and you couldn't make it, 
like you miss one, it's like a four week course and you miss one, you get the replay, but the replay wow. isn't up for the general public because obviously you have to register for the workshop for you to be privy to that workshop. So you could probably put that behind a paywall and charge people for it if you wanted to. That's actually a thought. As I was saying that, I was like, hmm. Huh. Cause that's what I do with mine. I put them behind a paywall. Yeah. I'm like, you got to pay me at least five cents to see this crap. <laughs> um, shit of the podcast. But, I mean, we should charge at least 10 cents. Um, so uh, this has been pretty insightful and, and uh, I love the website. It's beautiful. How do people get involved? How did they become a, what you guys call evidently a you instructor? How did they get involved with the website? So, so firstly, at some point when we are completely developed, we are going to have a subscription fee. Mm -hmm. Nominal, but a, a prescription fee nonetheless. Right now, um, it's free to create an account. And once you create an account, you get to see behind the curtain and look at all the, the workshops and see what's going on. But to become a U instructor, all you have to do is go to finduniquelyu.com, look on the home page, see all the cool stuff that's going on. But you'll say, if it says, if you want to be, just um, submit a form. Very and nice. then you'll hear from me directly. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go from there. And if we think it's a good fit, um, we will create coursework together. Again, my title, not one for titles, but is a chief officer of curriculum and content. So I take all of my years in education and help you take the best of your ideas, even if you've never taught before, and assist you in, in presenting that to a live virtual classroom. Because you're used to doing that for 25 years as a teacher, right? Yeah. And, you know, it was it, it, not only was I a teacher, I wore many, many hats. My, mm -hmm. my Again, my official title was a director of student development. But it's not only about creating curriculum. It's about... Uh, I, I mentor teachers, teaching them how to teach students with differ differentiating learning styles. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm teaching, I've been teaching people how to teach my whole life. So it's really the perfect fit. That is because most people that, you know, sign up for a course uh, company, you know, that helps them make and publish courses, there's no one really to help them. And if you're, if you're not good at, you know, presenting stuff well and putting it into a concise process so that people can be like, oh, I understand what this is. And they can actually learn from it. You know, it's kind of like our show. People are just like, I don't, I don't know. Chris made some jokes. I didn't learn anything. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, I'm dumber now. <laughs> that's why I have, that's why I have brilliant guests like you on because you guys make me look good. They're like that. Chris Voss seems kind of smart, but his guests are brilliant. Uh, so now we're smarter for it. That's, I mean, when I used to do this on the show solo, you know, people just walk away and be like, I think I lost some IQ points. <laughs> anyway, uh, anything more we want to touch on or plug before we go out? Um, just you got a it, lot going it, on. Dana. I, you know, uh, yeah, the irons are in all the fires. Yeah. The, the big thing, the thing that I think is really, I didn't go into teaching. I didn't do, I don't do what I do because I'm not, because I don't want to help people. I mean, I always say I'm not I'm not making post-its here. Like I really want to help make the world a better place. So first and foremost, if you feel stuck or if you feel like life has just dealt you, you know, a shitty hand, mm -hmm. I, I really, really recommend picking up 10 recommendments. It will lead you to beyond the 10 decoding the woo-woo or not. That's your business. But if you really are ready to do the work and to make some changes in your life and live a fulfilling life, I highly recommend 10 Rex. If you feel lonely or like, you know, there's people everywhere, but I'm, you know, I'm in a sea of people and I can't connect with anybody and you're looking to reignite your spark. I, I can't stress enough. Go to finally find uniquely you.com. There's something there for everybody. And, uh, and we're personal. We're real people. We don't even have our things automated yet. You send us an email. We are responding to you ourselves. There you, you know? go. There you go. Well, that's yeah. sometimes the best way to do it. I like to respond to people uh, personally on email. Um, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's just more of a personal touch. So yeah. that, that's the best way to do it. But, uh, you know, this will be cool. This will be cool to see the rollout of this. I love the website. It's really beautiful. It's great artwork. and That's Angela. That's nice. Yeah, I mean, you got to have somebody that it, you can always tell, you know, a good website from a bad website, website. And it looks like you guys have either a podcast or uh, you have Cuddle Talk, it's called. What, what's ah! going on there? <laughs> I forgot about Cuddle There's Talk. There's some spooning going on or something. What's going on there? <laughs> oh my God, pillow fights, tickle fights, the whole nine. The whole, that's what wow. we do. Now, this is an OnlyFans. This is a Cuddle Talk on your website, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. I had to put that so, joke in there. So Cuddle Talk, we Angela and I created Cuddle Talk. Again, another arm of FindUniquelyU.com because we have so many amazing people within this community that we're developing. And, mm-hmm. and people have things that they want to talk about. And, and the focus in Cuddle Talk is to talk about when people step into their greatest, their greatness, excuse me, when people finally realize that there's more to life than – and, mm-hmm. and what the turning point was for them. And often, again, there are people in our community, are you instructors? But we call it Cuddle Talk because I'm always like, Cuddle. But we call it Cuddle Talk because <laughs> we insist that our guests either be in their pajamas or loungewear, uh, bring a, a stuffy or something that like they chill with, not be at their desk. Like I do it. I film on my futon in my office at home. Mm. And it's got to be the most authentic version of themselves because people go on shows and they put on airs, right? And like, you know, you watch The Tonight Show and everybody looks perfect and everybody's got their pre, you know, their story that's already been pre-discussed. No, tell us something that is is embarrassing, that's uncomfortable, that we're all human beings. Everybody poops. Everybody (laughs) poops. Let's just be who you are. And that's really the premise for Cuddle Talk. So Angela and I, and then we have episodes where we don't interview people that we call Go in Commando. Oh. Because <laughs> it's another, yeah. Oh, nothing is by accident, Chris. I see your face. Wasn't Going nothing. Commando then that scene in Old School where Will Ferrell runs the street streaking? Wasn't that? Isn't that yeah. Right? So it's another layer. Another layer comes off and we're just the most, the, even more of an authentic version of ourselves. You're sure this isn't on OnlyFans? Anyway. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the screenshots of it, and it looks really fun. Uh, there's people wearing some uh, <laughs> there's some teddy bears there. I mean, clearly, these are pajamas. People, yeah. there's some funny hats uh, and uh, different. Oh, that hat! Stuff. I'm sorry to cut you off. It was our Halloween special. It was an alien ah. hat. Yeah, yeah. I said, Angela, what if I wore this? She's like, you're not taking that off. I'm like, all right. All well, right. there you go. There Don't you go. Going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I got the Will Ferrell thing stuck from old school. Yeah. Man. It's such a great movie. I yeah. mean, you you actually did a bit from it earlier with the tranquilizer gun with COVID. There you go. Yeah, you, you triggered that in me. You set that off. Uh, so this is really interesting. And you're a lot of fun, Dana. So these these uh, Cuddle Talk uh, podcasts you got going on uh, are going to be a lot of fun, too. Looks like you got about eight in the can there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. So um, there you go. I, I mean, it's, it, it sounds like a fun show to tune into. It sounds like you're building a fun community. And uh, I think that's important, right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's, there's, you know, we, we talk about this on the show. We try and deliver a show that what we call info entertainment. So we try and bring on smart people like yourself that educate people. We also try and entertain at the same time because to me, that's the best delivery of education and uh, knowledge is if you can have fun delivering it. And so a lot of people that I watch or study as a host or Johnny Carson or Stephen Colbert, uh, they're really good at being able to, Stephen Colbert is really good about just even taking news that sometimes is depressing. And really what he's doing is informing the audience, he's educating the audience because no one reads the news anymore and and no one reads anymore. Uh, and so he makes it so that he, he turns it into comedy, he turns it into fun, especially during the monologue. Uh, and so... To me, that's what really makes the show, my show, great, or I think what makes it great because I'm a narcissist. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, info entertainment. And so people like it. They're like, hey, I learned something and I got some laughs out of it. And uh, I had a good time, you know, which is different than the show we do where we just, you know, run things under your nails and, and hook uh, hook battery cables up to you and, right. then, and then waterboard you or something. That's a whole different show. I think that's called the not Chris Foss show. I don't know what that means. <laughs> that joke goes nowhere. Anyway, thanks Dana for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. And you've been very inspiring. And uh, I like the idea of having a course creating service that no one has that where they can actually have a teacher help them create something so that it's actually interesting. You might learn something. Cause I've seen a few courses and I'm like, this is really awful. I think they're oh, all yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, they're all yours. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. Anyway, uh, so give us your dot coms wherever people look you up at the inner tubes in the sky, those pneumatic things that run across the uh, clouds. All right. So to find um, me specifically, information about my books, the, the gallery, the things that I do, you could go to UbuntuFishGallery.com. Mm-hmm. 
to get a better understanding and to find out what's going on find uniquely you it's find uniquely you.com and um and what's cool is and i don't know if i i mentioned it but i don't think i was really clear that the three books that i have that i've published all three of them i have full courses that are on the schedule oh, wow. at find uniquely you.com so i've got the book and I teach the courses based on the book. So it's, it's, and, and a lot of our U instructors are doing things like that. Again, they're creating their own curriculum based on their own passion projects. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. There you go. Passion projects, find what you love. You know, I've talked about that in my book. You, you, you've got to find what you love to do because it makes all the difference when you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, I got to go work today because then it's not work anymore. It's yeah. your passion, you know, and, uh, you know, that's how I wake up with the show. I'm like, I get to do the show today and usually a couple, two or three shows sometimes per day. And it's fun. And I love learning and I get to sit in front of people that have spent 10,000 hours learning whatever. And I get to ask all the cool questions, you know, a lot of questions that don't get asked in three minute segments when they're on, you know, one of the news channels. And so I love it. And I love meeting people and seeing what their journey is. It's always an adventure for me. Some, some adventures are more than others. Oh, but not you, Dana. Um, <laughs> it's been a fun adventure with you. Uh, there's, Thank you. I mean, there's one or two guests. We one one guest we had on the show that was really irritable. It was a few years ago, uh, but you know, he he wasn't too happy to do the daily book launch uh, call-in. So there you go. I always remember that show. That dude was angry. Um, but uh, you know, if I had to do fifty uh, book publishing podcast interviews in a day, I probably would be too. Um, so thanks for coming on the show, Dana. We really appreciate it. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. There you go. Uh, check Dane out. And if you uh, don't get a chance, watch the YouTube version because we always want you to go to YouTube and check out her artwork and go to her gallery. And, and I think some of your artwork is up at, on the website, isn't it? Yeah, I do. I do have, actually have some on the website. There you go. Very good. Do you sell it? Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering, you know, some people are like, no, I don't sell my artwork. Oh, my God. It's hard. I'll tell you, it's difficult. I'm like, like, like the ones behind me, the ones that are flanking me, like uh -huh. they're going to be pulled out of my hands like this when they're ready to go. <laughs> but, you know, I'm happy to sell, do commissions, whatever, <laughs> whatever it takes. Spread the go. love of YouTube. Spread the love. There you go. Uh, so check it out, guys. We certainly appreciate you guys coming by. Go to goodreads.com for chess Chris Foss. Go to youtube.com for chess Chris Foss. LinkedIn.com, uh, all the crazy places over there, the big 130,000 group on LinkedIn. Uh, go see us on TikTok. We're trying to get some videos up on TikTok right now and uh, get the format right. It's so hard to get like everything to fit in their little box because we do this widespread of our video. So watch for what we're doing over there. Stay tuned for further episodes. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time. And that should